Okay. Yeah. Well, thanks everybody for coming down. It's absolutely buzzing in here, which is really, really wonderful. So thank you all for your support. And uh, thank you, Ava, as well, for a wonderful, wonderful course. It's been really, really stimulating to get the work done. It's been wonderful. Um, the, the work that I've got here, I've got two sets. There's, um, it's called Flowers of Hope, Flowers of Disappointment. And it was uh, inspired by a bit of writing by Robert Augustus Mar uh, Masters called that. And it's, uh, it was just a starting idea. It was the idea of embracing all that life has to offer. And uh, I was kind of curious to see what that would look like if you tried to photograph it. So um, as soon as I went running with that idea, I got into the symbolic meaning of flowers and uh, learning just how, how, uh, how many thousands of years they've uh, influenced our consciousness. And I uh, decided to start with uh, a really obvious place, uh, the red rose is symbolic of the heart and symbolic of love. Uh, but in my uh, rose set, uh, I'm exploring, if you like, the mystery of the heart. Um, uh, I have one piece called I Forgive Myself for Love Lost. And uh, another one that's looking at skulls and roses, which is symbolic of uh, death and resurrection. When I chose to look at the calla lily, uh, this is symbolic uh, of purity and resurrection. And so, for me, this shot here is like the, the best attempt at purity that I could uh, get uh, photographically. And um, here we have something that's fairly symbolic of resurrection. Uh, but, you know, there's very strong kind of uh, Christ connections as well. And um, all of my failed attempts to get the ultimate shot that I was going for combined to make up a mosaic uh, of this larger piece. Um, I wanted to just touch on the process that I was using to create the images, not technically, but intuitively. So I would have an idea, uh, a kind of a, a structure, a framework for the project. And whenever I use my rational mind to take the photograph, it would be okay. Um, but uh, if I kind of really sort of sat with the idea, if you like, meditated, um, allowed kind of intuition to come up, uh, a symbol to arise that would take me further forward, then I would almost always get the shot that I was after. But it was a very difficult journey because once you've got the vision in your mind of what you're trying to achieve, nothing less than that will do. So then you just end up doing hours and hours of photography you know, in the quest for it. But I'm uh, really happy with what I ended up with and um, I hope you enjoy what we have here. Everybody, thank you for coming. And uh, it's been very well attended. We didn't expect that many people to come tonight. It's great to see you all. Um, I've been doing the course, we've been doing the course with Ava for the last six weeks, and it's been absolutely fantastic. It's been uh, very inspiring. Um, there was nothing about, although it was a photography course, there was nothing about the technical side there. Um, we were just sort of set free really to um, to develop and to do what we uh, and to do what we felt fit, um, which was really nice. It was nice to get away from all the technical side and um, different exposures and shutter speeds and things like that, and just to be just to um, be free with it. Um, I quite like images that you can interpret yourself, something that you sort of look into and see in them what ever you will and um, that's what really inspired me to do my project which I titled No Thing. Um, it's, um, as I said before, it's a work in progress and it's the type of thing where it's, for, it's forever changing. I found personally that um, the project would, would change almost, almost daily. Um, how I was going to present it, whether I wanted to put music with it or text. Uh, but I wanted to mainly make it speak for itself and hope that um, so people get, get out of it, get something out of it, um, and probably share, share something with, with myself. 
Um, thanks, Ava, for the last six weeks. It's been great. It's been great to get to know you and everybody else as well that I've done the course with. It's been really interesting. I've learned a lot from all of you. And, um, oh, it's the future. I hope you can all do something, something again. floating around in the sea in the channel and that salt dean where all these photos were taken. Um, there's no people in mine or anything, which um, I think probably says a lot. Um, and there's a slight desolation thing there. It's like this big space here and I feel a little bit... So that's it. It is to make of it what you will, sort of just little things that I found quite pretty. And this is Bronya McHugh. My project, well, when I started the project, I didn't have really, really have an idea of um, what I wanted to work on. Um, so, yeah, through, through, the, through the course, we had a six-week course, and every every week we just did some, another part of project work. Part of the course was basically how to do a project. So as the weeks went on, I looked at my photographs that I'd taken in the past and most of them were of landscapes, townscapes, not really of people at all. I sort of decided I'm going to challenge myself and take pictures of people. So I managed to take pictures of people from behind when they couldn't see me. <laughs> <laughs> and I, well, I thought in my photographs I had a theme of um, people looking isolated and sort of disconnected and disjointed. I basically just went with that theme and um, yeah, just when we were walking along or waiting for a train and I might just take a picture of my seeing something that caught my eye and um, that's really, once I had a theme of, once I had a theme it just went, it went from there really and yeah that's it really. <laughs> And we continue <laughs> with Mike. As you can see, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for coming tonight. As you can see, I live a very orderly life, and you know this is straight from the uh, photographer's heart. I'm actually working on a longer-term project, which is the, the Seven Deadly Sins. And I'm working on them really concurrently, but to try and bring something together for Dr. Eber's class and, and course, I've, I've concentrated on gluttony. And I took time through these pictures actually in South Africa on a recent trip, but other ones around the town and, and in West Sussex, where I live. So next time you bite into a burger or something that you feel guilty about, be very careful because I might be photographing you. <laughs> Thank you. It's been a very great course. And Nice to meet so many lovely people. And uh, we continue with Eva Garay. Yeah, so hello everyone, thank you for coming. And um, my work is um, kind of getting lost in this farm work, 
I was nearby working. And um, it's actually in two sections. You have a little bit, little photos around the corner. And it's kind of in a story, small story that is twisted or a different perspective, which is what I'm trying to look for in a photography. I like to get lost and see where it takes me. So take, go to an object, first see it from afar, and slowly come closer and closer and see what, as if I'm going to find a different object within it in the photograph. So this is what I've tried to do with these pictures. And the background of them are maybe you know, like the, a slurry pit in the farm or um, old derelict uh, bits of jars and things that were left there and find something possibly beautiful. Um, I leave it up to you if you find it beautiful. This is what I find artistically pleasing or engaging or something where I can get lost in. And finding a different world and something that is abandoned, not more used, barely used. And yeah, hope you like them. And thank you again. <laughs>